This is Ubuntu 24.4. In this video, I will tell you what the new features are and all important information you need to know about the new Ubuntu flagship. Welcome, I'm Jean from Linux Guides and let's start with the basic infos. Ubuntu 24.4 has the code name Noble Numbered and gets five years security updates and even seven years afterwards with Ubuntu Pro enabled. Ubuntu Pro can be enabled on five devices free of charge. So that means that Ubuntu 24.4 will be supported until 2036, which is a lot of time. That's great for companies. Also, Ubuntu 24.4 comes with a ARM version. So Ubuntu will be ready for the new generation of hardware chips, which will be shifted to ARM in the next years. For example, you can even run Ubuntu 24.4 on a Raspberry Pi. Also, Ubuntu comes with the new Linux kernel. If we go to system details, here we see it, kernel version Linux 6.8, which is brand new and comes with the latest hardware support, which is really important for newer hardware out there. And all these details make a good base for the new Ubuntu LTS flagship 24.4. And I would say, let's start with the new features. Ubuntu comes with a new app center. We will look about it in a minute, but before let's take a look to the new installer. Yeah, Ubuntu is coming with a new installer, which you can see here. We can choose our language at the beginning, click on next. There we have some accessibility features in the installer, for example, for hearing, seeing or typing or zoom but it is very important that you click on the arrow on the right side here because sometimes the simple click on the heading doesn't work. For example, also in the German version, in here this looks quite good, but yeah, the arrow is more reliable, I would say. Yeah, that's great that we have some accessibility features directly in the installer now. And let's head over to next. There we can select our keyboard layout. Let's head over to German. In my case, I select next. And then we can decide if we want to connect to the internet or if we don't want to connect to the internet. I like this feature very much. And in comparison to Windows 11, which also forces you to create an online account and sometimes also forces you to connect to the internet, this is just a cool feature in Linux. So let's head over to the option where we can now install Ubuntu or try Ubuntu. Let's stick to install Ubuntu and here we can select between the interactive and automated installation. Yeah, you heard it right. Ubuntu comes now with an automated installation if you want. You can define everything in a YAML file, just like a bit in NixOS for example, where you can now define the rest of the installation and the setup, which makes it really good for big companies. Let's head over to the interactive installation, which is the default one for us. And now we can select between the default selection of apps or the extended selection, because now the before known minimal version is now the default selection and the before normal installation is now the extended selection. So that means the default version of Ubuntu comes without, for example, Thunderbird, without LibreOffice, just with a web browser and some other help tools that you have a clean, very simple system with no additional applications. Yeah, I'm heading with the default selection in here. I'm selecting next and now we can install recommended proprietary software if we want to. I personally recommend it to you. For example, the third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, also the additional media formats. If you're a normal person, then select both of them and head to next. Then Ubuntu will have a high hardware compatibility. In the next point, we can now define how do we want to install Ubuntu. For example, erase the whole disk and install Ubuntu. On the other side, we can also install it next to, for example, Windows, if another distribution is recognized. And also we can head over to the manual installation where we can now yeah, define our manual partition table. But as a default, I recommend you to erase the disk or to install it next to your Windows, for example. And also we can select some advanced features here like LVM and encryption, but the very cool new experimental features are the ZFS support, which is the million dollar file system, I guess. Just have a look at it. But normally you don't want to use any advanced feature, especially if you have only a laptop 
or computer which is always at your home and you don't take it for example to work or into vacation if you are doing this then an encryption option could be very handy i would say i'm going with none in here select ok and in the next step i select next here we can create our account which is only a local account so nothing gets into the internet at this point. Also, we can enable Active Directory, which is very important for companies, but in my case, we don't have it. So let's select next. And now we can define our time zone. In my case, I'm from Germany. So Europe Berlin is fine. And we select next and here we can now review our choices so that the installer only starts with the whole installation if we now press on install. I would say let's do this and let's head over to the slideshow of the new Ubuntu features yeah, which looks quite cool. Okay, I would say let's jump forward in time when everything is finished. So let's head over to the app center in here. Now we can review it and you see Ubuntu comes with a brand new app center, which is introduced, I guess, in Ubuntu 23.10, but now it got more updates and I would say it's just very clean. We have some proposed applications, for example, for our Start Your Desktop that we can install LibreOffice, Thunderbird, Remina, all the default applications which are coming with the extended version. We can see them here or we can go to some featured snaps, which is very cool software, which they propose. For example, Mindtest is great, but the rest I don't even know. Maybe Mumble, it's a TeamSpeak alternative, but who of us is using now TeamSpeak? speak on mumble at the current time write it me into the comments if you are doing so i head back over to explore then we can now also see something for our game nights for example steam discord mind test and zero ad zero ad is an age of empires clone which is a great game i played it a lot also we have some more categories in here like music and audio education personalization and so on also we have some must-have snaps for developers and also something for our office i would say also we have some big categories in here which are called productivity development and games which are the big overall points in here and also we have some options here where we can for example check for updates and manage our installed applications. I installed some applications already, for example, KeyPass XC or Thunderbird. If I head over to an application, we can see some basic information about it, a gallery, a description, and also if we want to install it, if we like this application or if we don't like this application, for example, I select, yeah, I like it very much. And then we can also define a channel if we want. This is an advanced feature. Normally you don't change that in a way. So just keep it as it is. And there you can install it, open it or uninstall it. I don't like it that we have to go to the three dots and then select uninstall in this menu. In my opinion, we have a lot of space in here where we can put also our uninstall button. But yeah, that's a design question. But yeah, in overall, the new App Center is a great tool. But if you search for some app, for example, key pass XC, then it is filtered for snap packages by default. If we want to get the old traditional Debian packages, then we head over to Debian in here. Yeah, I don't like it that we can only see snap packages or Debian packages. But yeah, we see Ubuntu is ditching the traditional Debian packages from version to version. I'm not a fan of this. So let's also head over to the settings menu, which we have here in GNOME. It has a few changes, for example, if we now come to system, we have a grouped category in here. There we can find, for example, software updates, secure shell network access, remote desktop users, region and language. Also the about screen I presented some minutes ago. So something is grouped together that we see a good overview of all settings in here. Also, we have a new online accounts implementation in there. Now online accounts also supports Microsoft 365, Microsoft Personal and Exchange, also Google and what I am using and proposing is Nextcloud. It's a free private cloud. I'm using it 
for my whole workflow. And the very cool about this, the Nextcloud server stands right next to me in my own office. But also beside Nextcloud, some generic things are supported like email, calendar, contacts and files over WebDAV and some enterprise login with Kerberos, but the most of us won't need this one. Also, we have a fresh menu at the right top corner where we can now take a screenshot very, very fast in here, adjust the selection, select a screen or a window, and then we can record it or just take a screenshot of it. That's very cool. Also, we can reach our settings very fast lock our screen and power off our system, of course. Also, we can change the volume, the sound output, but if we want to regulate our applications one by one, then we have to go to the sound settings. In here, the sounds under volume levels are now displayed, which is quite a long way for such an easy feature. I am not a fan about this. This was also in the versions before Ubuntu 24.4, but yeah, we have to deal with it in Ubuntu. Then we can, for example, switch between the balanced mode and the power saver mode. Also on some systems, you could enable a performance mode. And also we can here now easily switch between the dark style, which is this one, also with a dark background or the normal style, I would say, which is the bright style. Also, we have a new app, which is called Firmware Updater. Here you can update your hardware if your manufacturer supports it. This is a very cool project started some years ago by Red Hat, and now it also has its graphical user interface in Ubuntu, which is a great feature in my opinion. If we also look to the official post of Ubuntu, we have new notifications with action buttons in it. Also, for example, Office 365 or the Google Workspace or G Suite will be supported with one simple command, or I guess you can also then install it via the App Center. I personally couldn't find this feature at the time, but I'm having a development version in here. This is not the final release, but I guess it will come at a later point of time. And yeah, they want to integrate, for example, the G Suite or Office 365 better into the current desktop. So they want to attack the Chromebooks, which is a nice feature, but for the standard Linux user isn't a big deal, I guess. Also, a new security center will come with hardware security support, especially in encryption of your disk but hardware based. Also, you will find some options for your network settings, which is for example, the firewall and something like a stealth mode to ignore pings or something like that. Also, you can adjust and activate the pro features in terms of security updates. And also we have some app confinement settings. For example, you can now better control which app is getting which access. We can see it already in our settings menu under apps. And then for example, if we open up Firefox, then we can now define the permissions. And this will be also available in the new security center. I guess it will come in a future version of Ubuntu. Initially, it was announced for this version, but yeah, it takes a bit more time, I guess. If you want something like a security overview at the current moment of time, have a look to linuxassistant.org. It is a application I wrote. It's completely free and open source. You can download the dev file and install it in the best way, but Ubuntu can't install dev files graphically at the moment. Every other distribution supports it. Ubuntu not graphically at the moment because the new App Center isn't capable of it at the current moment of time. So if this also don't work on your machine, just head over to the installation descriptions. There you can find some instructions for Debian based systems like Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Fedora, Arch Linux. So Linux Assistant now supports all important big Linux distributions, I would say and some more may come. And if we open up this guy, we can, for example, search for our security check, which comes in here. And now it is analyzing our system security and presents some information on your current security situation on Linux. If you will see the video, then Linux Assistant also recognizes the new Ubuntu sources because they have changed. But also you can see, okay, is your system up to date? Is your home folder secure? 
And is your firewall up and running, which isn't the default in Ubuntu. And also it shows you some information if you, for example, have enabled SSH service or XRDP. So Linux Assistant wants to ensure that you don't make big mistakes in your security handling of your Linux system. Just have a look at it. It has a lot more options like cleaning disk space and a very great search. I also made a video about it. I put you the link into the video description. So yeah, let's head over to the conclusion of this video. My personal opinion is that Ubuntu 24.4 is a solid release and will succeed in a big way. But one downside of Ubuntu is the advertising of Ubuntu Pro, which we can, for example, see here. And also it asks us at updates if we want to enable Ubuntu Pro and we could get a bit more secure with Ubuntu Pro. And hey, do you want to activate Ubuntu Pro because you are getting longer updates? That are all cool features, but the advertising of it is a bit annoying in my opinion. But the rest of Ubuntu is quite solid with some minor issues. For example, depth files can't be installed graphically at the moment of time. And also the flat pack isn't available by default on Ubuntu. Small hint, Linux Assistant asks you if it should do it automatically. Then you have a whole more bunch of Linux applications, which almost all other Linux distributions are supporting. So definitely have a look on it. But yeah, this is disabled by Ubuntu by default and isn't advertised at any point because they want you to use Snap, which is their own app store and they have the complete control about it. FlatHub is just by the community. So yeah, these are the downsides of Ubuntu, but the rest is very solid. And I personally recommend you, if you have already Ubuntu 22.4 installed, to wait with the update until summer or better autumn. Then many developers already support the new Ubuntu version and the most bugs are out of it. So I personally would wait. But if you want to try new things out and if you're already quite familiar with Linux, then go for it, try it out. It's a great solid distribution, I would say. If you're a complete beginner, I personally would recommend you Linux Mint. I did also a video about it, but with Ubuntu, you also don't make a bad choice. And the greatest thing about Linux is we can all choose the Linux distribution we want to choose. And no one says us which version, which desktop to use and how we use it. That's the great freedom of Linux. So yeah, that was it for today. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you in the next one. Bye.